All right then, what is going on guys and girls? Welcome back to the Golf Magic channel and welcome back to a very exciting equipment review video. First of all, if you guys are new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to keep up to date with all our equipment reviews, tour news, instruction tips, and a lot more to help you guys improve your game for all of 2021. Now here in the UK, we are in a lockdown, meaning that we can't go and play golf or anything like that, which is a lot of shame. And it's not very, it's not very epic. Can I say that? But today I've got something that is epic, and that is the new Callaway driver release for 2021. As you can see in my hand, Callaway have released three new Callaway Epic drivers for 2021. So a continuation for their previous range, not last year, but a few years ago. Last year was obviously the Maverick, and they've gone back to the Epics, which I think is a very good idea. As you can see, I've got three models with me today. The Epic Max LS, the low spin version, the Epic Speed, the middle version that kind of caters towards every golfer, and the Epic Max, which is the more forgiving kind of driver for the mid to high handicap players. What I'm going to do today is take all three drivers through their paces, from looks to the, the technology as well, and then finally take it through the performance here at this wonderful launch monitor at Chromehurst Golf Club, the Swing Suite, where I've got Trackman and a lot more to give you all the numbers that you need if you're thinking of purchasing a Callaway driver for 2021. There's a lot of information to take in here with three brand new models, so sit down, get comfortable, because this is going to be a long video. Without further ado, let's get right into the video of the brand new Callaway Epic drivers. So first things first, let's talk about looks of these three drivers. Pretty important, as this is the thing you're going to be looking down at when you're bombing these drives. So all three drivers have a similar color palette and design. I will show you videos of all three drivers, but let's just base off kind of an overall aspect and feel of these three drivers. It's interesting to note the difference that this driver is from the Maverick. I know it is a continuation of their previous Epic line, but for me, this is a, a big difference in comparison to the 2019 release from Callaway. You can see that there's a lot of new technology that's jam-packed into this driver, and there is a lot of technology that Callaway always put into their clubs, from the AI to the flash phase. There's so much to take in, so we'll get onto that in a little bit. But you can see that this is a completely new design that they've got. It is obviously a continuation from the Epic, but there's a few things that I can see, especially the, the, the little slot of carbon in the toe of the club that I'm sure there's a reason behind that but in terms of how it looks I feel like it's a lot less loud than previous Callaway models obviously the Maverick was orange bright orange but with this it looks a little bit different it's mainly a kind of matte black finish with a bits of silver and obviously the green that you always have in the epic models looking down at the club it does look like for the speed as well it's a more compact model there are different head sizes with the epic ls or the epic max ls obviously being towards the better player so that is a smaller head and more compact but looking down it is quite it's a very classical callaway feel in comparison to other models that they have, obviously the B21 is much more forgiving, but when I'm looking down at this in comparison to previous Mavericks, previous Epic, it does look very similar to the Epic. So I don't think that much is different here. But when I'm looking at it from actually a dress, yeah, not too much different, but more of a compact head. I don't think Callaway have changed too much because the Epic range was so successful when it comes to looks. But when I'm looking down at it here, you can see that, especially the head of it, is just a little more, a little quieter, which I do kind of understand why Callaway have done that. I think that golfers are now preferring that more classical look. And although there are certain things of this club, obviously there is the massive epic speed and they've got the weighting in the back and you've also got some little indentations on the, on the front of the club as well. There are much louder Callaway releases that have happened in the past. For me, I do prefer that, but is there drivers that I prefer? Perhaps. But for Callaway so far, I think this for me is pretty decent and it does look pretty appealing. If you have the previous Epic range, the main thing I'd say is there's not too much difference so far when it comes to look. It's just a little bit of a rejig. There are new things that are introduced, but you guys obviously are aware that they're all the Callaway technology that they have in previous models. There is obviously a generational approach here, as I said, so that it goes smaller from the LS all the way up to the Max, which is the biggest model, which is exactly how it should be. And Callaway have got it right here in dividing each three product range so that it can be categorized towards each type of golfer, similar to the Apex Iron Line. Now, what's new? with these three models. How does it compare to the old Callaway Epics? How does it compare to the Callaway Mavericks? If you have those models, should you be purchasing this because of the new technology that they put into it? 
Let's go back to the studio where I can talk about the new technology that they've put into these three models, how much it could revolutionize previous models, and if I think this will actually improve the Callaway Maverick or the Callaway Epic Flash that have been so popular of recent years. Let's jump back to the studio. So with the new Callaway Epic range, I'll give a quick rundown as to the technology they've introduced for all three products and then go into a bit of detail for each three individual drivers and just see what handicap range and what golf they're gonna be suited to. So the new technology they've introduced for all three drivers is the AI speed frame. So this may sound similar to the AI, the flash face, the jailbreak technology, and it is kind of related to that a little bit. Callaway have said that previous jailbreak architecture means that the body of the golf club was stiffened in a vertical direction. Now this AI designed speed frame means that they can enhance it in a horizontal direction and improve the teorsinal stability. It's a bit of a mouthful and to be honest I'm not really sure what that means going into the engineering point of view but for us golfers who just want massive ball speed that's exactly what they say it does. All this means that they're supposed to increase the ball speeds in comparison to previous models such as the Maverick and the old Epic. And this is throughout the whole face, so not just when you hit the sweet spot for whatever you hit it, if you hit it out the heel or in the toe. As well as this, the AI flash face that was so popular in the Maverick has been improved in tandem with this new speed frame to really fine tune those massive ball speeds and make sure it's consistent across the whole face. So it seems that again, they're pushing towards forgiveness, but with that massive ball speed increase in distance as well. Now going to the Epic Max LS, this is obviously the lowest spinning model for the mid to low handicap player. This is the most neutral club that they've released out of these three models, meaning that it's got no draw bias and it is the most favorable club out of the three. It still does have movable weights to enhance your shot shaping, but the main thing that I wanna talk about with this one is the triaxial carbon cover, meaning that they've been able to save 13 grams in comparison to previous models. This means that they can redistribute this across the face for max forgiveness and a more penetrating ball flight. As mentioned, this is the most fade capable out of the whole Epic family, but there is an adjustable rear weighting on the club, meaning that you can adjust shot shaping by 13 yards, which is pretty decent for a mid to low handicap club. And if you do tend to hook or fade the ball, you can then change this up and make sure it is optimized as possible for your swing. The Epic Speed is said to be the pillar model out of this new Epic release. So the one that can cater towards the most golfers, more towards the mid handicap golfers, but even if you're a low handicap or high handicap player, this could be the one for you. Callaway say that this head is the fastest driver head they've ever done with their Cyclone Aero shaping. Now this isn't new towards 2021 at all, they had that in previous models. But what Callaway have said is that the advanced aerodynamic head construction promotes lower drag and higher ball speeds more than ever before. This means that this club can help all golfers generate much more speed from their swing. Similar to the Epic Max LS, this also has a proprietary triaxial carbon cover and what that does is reduce the weight of the club by 16 grams in comparison to previous models. What Callaway have done with this weight is then redistributed it for forgiveness, max ball speeds, and made this supposedly the fastest club they've ever released. And finally, the Epic Max is said to be Callaway's most forgiving driver ever. This is being built on extremely successful Maverick Max, which a lot of professionals and amateurs alike said was an amazing driver, didn't get too high of a uh, kind of spin rate, and still produced an extremely straight ball flight. Now with this club, what they've done is saved 19 grams of weight with the priority triaxial carbon cover. And with that, again, they've redistributed this across the face, but mainly for just forgiveness and a high launch in comparison to other models. So this is really echoing the forgiveness that the Max really should have. As well as this, it has a draw bias on the club, but it does have a 17 gram sliding rear weight on the back of the club, meaning that you can optimize this and change it up so that you can really get that optimal ball speed and shot shaping that all amateurs want. So as you can see, there's a lot of information here and it seems that these three drivers are very different from each other. But let's jump back to the swing suite at Chromehurst Golf Club and test these three drivers out and see which ones could be right for your game. Let's jump back to Chromehurst Golf Club. So you can see that there is some pivotal new technology that have been introduced into these Callaway drivers. And for me, I feel like this should mean there should be some exceptional results for performance for all three of these products. I'm gonna try out these on the launch monitor here at Trackman at the Swing Suite at Chrome Hurst Golf Club so I can get some pretty accurate readings as to how far this is going, how accurate it is in terms of dispersion and which one should be right for your game. First up, I'm gonna try the Epic Max LS, a driver that I think is gonna be suited towards me especially as I really do like that low spinning driver. Let's hit it now and let's see how good it really is.
Right, so the Epic Max LS. For me, I wasn't expecting too much on this one. I wasn't really sure how much these products from the Epic Max LS, Epic Speed, Epic Max, how much there would be a massive difference. I mentioned in the Ping G425 video that I was really impressed by the exact difference, how the three clubs were so different from each other. And from first impressions with the Epic Max LS, I think this could be pretty similar. I was getting low, low spin, really low spin. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, my miss is a high right shot with a lot of spin. I wasn't getting this at all with this club. My miss was similar to the ping driver review I did, was low and left, but it wasn't actually that left. My dispersion was pretty spot on and I am impressed with this driver so far. I'll put the data up on the screen now. So as you can see, I was getting good numbers, really good numbers. My club head speed, not great in terms of previous ones I've done, but nothing that's too negative really. But this driver is a bomber's driver. And what I am surprised about, similar to all reviews that I've done this year, is this driver is actually quite forgiving as well. You've got a lot of options. The driver that I've been given is a nine degree head. I deloft it to eight degrees and the shaft that I've got is a Rogue 70 gram. So pretty heavy shaft and I'm gonna use this for all the testing. I'm surprised that this club is forgiving. You'd think that a tour model, it wouldn't be that forgiving at all. And I would say I'm gonna dispel that myth. This one is pretty forgiving for a tour driver. I was getting pretty decent numbers across the whole of the club face. Obviously I do hit it pretty consistently out the middle and I did for this testing, but for the club shots that were a little bit out the toe, a little bit out the heel that I did hit, the numbers were pretty decent and I was averaging pretty easily 170 mile an hour ball speed, which is pretty good for my numbers. My smash factor was good as well, so you can tell that I was hitting it pretty straight most of the time. But yeah, my numbers were pretty much optimal for this and I was averaging over 300 yards easily and the spin was low. So this, this driver does the job. Let's see how this driver compares to the other three, two drivers that I've got. Let's jump right into the Epic Speed. So probably the most popular model that's gonna be released for Callaway this year. Let's see how I get on. So there goes the Epic Speed, the middle ground of these three Callaway drivers and one that Callaway would probably say would attest to more or less all golfers. How was this one different to the Epic Max LS and how did I just get on with it? This for me actually surprised me quite a bit. As I said previously, I'm using the exact same grip, the exact same features here. So it's nine degrees, but de-lofted to eight degrees. So the only difference that I have between this and the Epic Max LS is this head right here. Would you expect a massive difference? A little bit, but the difference was monumental. And the main thing that the difference is here is the spin rate. And I understand that obviously the low spin model promotes low spin, but I'll put the data up for you now. As you can see, the main thing that you can see here is the spin rate shot up. And I mean, absolutely shot up. For about an 800 RPM increase, I think that's arguably, it's, it's, it's a tough one to say because for me, the ping models, the LST shot up about 600. This shot up, shot up 800. And I still think that's fine for uh, fast swing speed, getting about 2,900. Obviously it's too much for me, but that then makes me think, what if you are, and I know that it's a very rare occasion, but what if you are a high handicap player with a fast swing speed? Because this is gonna get too much spin for you. I'm using a heavy shaft, I'm using a shaft that should promote low spin. But this one, it's, it's tough for me because I feel like I did like the feel and my dispersion was pretty good, but the shots that I were getting in comparison to other ones that I've hit whereby it was high spin, this would just stop instantly. The apex was too high, the launch angle was too high, and it was just not a club that I put in my bag. But that's my personal opinion. If I'm giving an opinion to someone who wants to purchase this driver who thinks that it would tick all the boxes for them, I would go for this driver if you want a bit of forgiveness and want that high launch, and I would say probably high spin, really. This probably could be tampered with a little bit to make it a little bit better for me in terms of launch angle, but it is quite surprising to see that massive jump in spin. It is a good thing because it's trying to categorize different types of golfers, but I would have personally liked it to be a little bit lower spin. Just my opinion. If you are looking to buy a Callaway driver, I still think this is a good driver because I said it's very forgiving and I didn't really hit any bad shots. And I did hit, looking at the club face now, there is a few out of the heel and a few at the toe. Not that much because it was quite consistent. I'm having a decent day here at the swing suite. But either way, the ones that were at the left and at the right a little bit, 
were similar to the Epic Max LS in that it was keeping up pretty decent ball speeds, but it was lower than the LS in that it was about 168 rather than the mid to low 170s, which not too surprised about, but again, for me, I would ex I expect a little bit more from this just in terms of the actual data that I received. If I wasn't basing it off data, I did like this driver a lot. I like the way it looks down at address. And I like the feel of it in comparison to other drivers that I've tested in 2021. But the data that I got wasn't as good as I was expecting, which is interesting. So for me, one good, one not so good. Let's see how the Epic Max gets on now because what, what difference can it be to this one? I don't know why my voice is going so high, <laughs> but what difference can this be in terms of that? Is it going to now be at the mid 3000 spin? Is it just going to be larger and just have a higher launch? Let's find out. So I've just had a go with the Epic Max here at the Swing Suite at Chromehurst Golf Club. And I'm gonna be honest, and you probably realized towards most of this video that I wasn't really expecting too much from this. And you can see with my review of the speed, I wasn't particularly happy with how the speed performed either. I thought the spin was quite high and although it was forgiving, it wasn't as like an all around driver as other drivers that I've reviewed in 2021 and even 2020. I thought the Maverick far superseded the Epic speed. So with the Epic Max, I know the Maverick Max got a lot of really good reviews, but I wasn't really sure what to expect with this. And for me so far, this is the surprise of 2021. A driver that is so big has the largest head possible, I would think would be obviously towards the high handicap players, would have high launch, high spin, and would be just towards that. But for me, I've actually never hit a driver better in terms of testing than this. I'll put the data up on the screen now for you. As you can see, in terms of spin rate, if you watch this channel pretty consistently, I do like the lowest spin criteria. So let's say low 2000s. This was more towards the mid 2000s, but that's not a problem. It's still in the optimum spin range. Now, the dispersion that I was getting, I'll be honest as well and say, I was trying to mess my swing a little bit, trying to close down the club face and hit from the inside during this testing. So when you're doing that, you would kind of expect there to be some misses. And I did get one miss that was quite a long way right, completely down to my swing. But then when I was hitting other shots that were, let's say a little bit out the toe, out the heel of the club face, it was going straight. And I mean, completely straight. The ball speed was not as fast as other ones, but I was still getting completely optimal data. So over 300 yards, pretty consistently, the spin was perfect and I didn't really hit a bad shot. For me, I didn't know what to expect with this driver. I thought it would be, again, a driver for someone who's off 30 and it would just help them get the ball up in the air. But when I'm now looking back at these three models from the Epic Max to the Epic Speed and the Epic Max LS, going into this, I expected the low spin model to be the one that I would go for. And I still do have a pretty strong feeling that this is a, that's a great club. But for the Epic Max, for someone who's not a professional like myself, for any amateur golfer, this could be the driver of 2021 because for me, there's no negatives. Yes, it's a, it's a massive club face, but that just means that wherever you hit it, it's gonna perform because of the way in which this club's built. Comparing it to other drivers that are, let's say, game improvement drivers, such as other Max drivers in TaylorMade and Ping, for me, this one went straighter. I may have got faster ball speed, but for me, the dispersion is what's more important than amateur golf because we'd always rather be in the fairway than in the rough, especially here in, the Eng in England where you're gonna be in the deep rough. And if you're playing Lynx courses, yes, this is the one for you. So this is the surprise of the year for me so far. I know it's, it's very early on, there could be a lot of other surprises coming our way, but comparing it to TaylorMade and Ping, this driver provides everything that an amateur golfer needs because it provides exceptional forgiveness and I'm still getting amazing numbers for my game. So with that, let's now jump back home to the studio where I can give my final thoughts on these three drivers, go through the price, when they're gonna be released and which one I think will be right for your game. Again, I thought that I would going into the end of this and giving you an exact criteria of which handicap you should use for which driver. But for me now, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. So I'm gonna have to have a think and give you guys the correct opinion as to which driver is right for your game. Let's jump back to the studio. So I've had a few days to decompress from my testing at the Swing Suite at Chromehurst Golf Club to really evaluate what each three models gave towards me and why I thought some were good and why I thought some were bad. First things first, let's talk about price for each model. So they all are the same price and they come in with an RRP of £499. So 
yeah, expensive. There's no other way of putting it. This is the more or less the max a driver can get. We have seen drivers creeping up there, especially in the last few years. I never really like any driver, any golf club being worth, any individual golf club being worth 500 pounds. The ping range, the ping G425 range was with an RRP of 439 pounds. They don't release clubs as regularly and it is just a little bit on the cheaper side. It being about 10% more expensive, you would kind of expect, I don't know, maybe a little bit more of an increase in quality and get better performance. I didn't really get that for the large majority of the Callaway testing. So I don't think the price is great, to be honest. It's definitely not a positive. These products are available to the public on the 18th of February, so not too far away. So if you guys are considering upgrading or if you are in the market for buying any new drivers in February, you're gonna have a lot to choose from. So what are my final thoughts of these three drivers? I can't really give an overall opinion on the actual Epic range because I think they're all so different to each other. Let's talk about the Epic Max to begin with, because that's one that I think I got on the best with. For me, I was really blown away by this one because I actually didn't really test the Maverick Max that much, but I know it had very good reviews. Now, I thought it would be very high launch, very high spin, but instead it was just, it kind of sat very well in the middle with about 2,600 RPM, but the main thing was all across the club face, wherever you hit it, it would go straight. It would be really nice and you'd have the consistent feel across the club face as well, and the results were optimal. This driver, although I'm off a low handicap, I would always consider having this in my bag on a day where I need to hit the fairway. I needed a fairway finder on a Lynx course or a day where I knew that the rough was far too penal than it usually is. Although the price is very expensive, I think this is a driver where if you bought it, you'd have it for quite a long time in comparison to other ones that have been released. So this is why for me, from Golf Magic, we're going to give the Epic Max a Golf Magic Gold Medal. We feel that this driver is definitely the one to watch in 2021, and although it probably is suited towards those higher handicap players with the way in which it's designed, a massive face and a draw bias, I do think it's suited to anyone. So keep an eye out for this one if you're in the market for a new driver. The Epic Speed is the one that did disappoint me the most. I don't know what was going on with it, but when I was hitting, and again, all that changed with it was the head. The shaft I'd used for consistently the whole testing. When I used it, the spin rate was high, but it went all over the place as well. Although I was hitting it pretty consistently straight, not as straight as the Epic Max, the spin was very inconsistent so that all over the face, it wouldn't be the same as the Epic Max or even the Epic Max LS. This one for me, even if it was a little bit better, I don't understand why anyone picked this over the Epic Max. The Epic Max is again forgiving. The Epic Speed is supposed to be forgiving, but promote massive ball speeds. For me, that wasn't true. The Epic Max, produced faster ball speeds. Very, very similar, but you would expect the Epic Speed to have something over the Epic Max, so you'd pick that. For me, it didn't. And with the price of £499, I just don't think it's worth it, in my opinion. I think go for the Epic Max. Which is why, here at Golf Magic, we're giving the Epic Speed a Golf Magic Silver Medal. There are a few things that it could improve on, and although it did do well in some parts, it's just not an all-around performing driver than when I tested it. So, yeah. One good, one bad so far. The Epic Max LS was a driver that I did definitely get on with and I definitely could consider putting it in my bag. It performed very well and it did succeed in the asset of getting low spin, which is exactly what you want. For a tall driver, for all the mid to low handicap players, I do think it's exactly one to watch as the design of it as well, this one, it's slightly smaller head, more compact, it does look exceptional. So for me, it's a tough one because then the price makes it a bit more expensive than the Ping G425 LST, which from reviewing them, I do prefer the looks of that one and the overall data that I got from it too. So it's tough. I'm kind of want to put it in between a silver and a gold medal, but for now, until I do more extensive testing and comparisons, I'm going to give it a Golf Magic silver medal, just because the price is a little bit steep and I feel like you can get some better models at a little bit of a cheap price. But this is subject to change because what I want to do is compare all these Callaway ranges to other releases that have happened in 2021, such as the Cobra Red Speed and the Ping G425 range. If you guys do want me to do this, let me know down in the comments which ones you especially want me to try out. For instance, the Ping G425 LST against the Callaway Epic Max LS, or let's say the Ping G425 Max against the Epic Max and the Epic Speed. Let me know. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please hit that like button down below and also hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all our equipment news, challenges, PGA Tour news, instruction and much much more to help you guys with your game for 2021. This was a lot of fun doing this review, one of the biggest releases of the year but there are a few coming very soon so keep your eyes peeled. I will do a lot of more comparisons in the future so yeah let me know down in the comments what comparisons you want me to do. I'll see you guys at the next video.